Gandhi, the beauty editor of Data Click. Fragrances have the power to change our mood, transport us to a faraway land. It can help you fall in love with someone, create a special bond with someone, just because scents hold the key to that connection, right? When you smell that note or that smell at a subconscious level, you're instantly reminded of all those memories and connections you've shared with that person or that moment. The beauty of fragrances is that all of these experiences are uniquely personal and you choose how to tell that story. I'm so excited to have with me some of the most creative minds of the perfumery industry. We have Ali Mathan, who is a perfumer and also passionate about Indian history and textiles. Thank you, Mamta, for having me here today. I'm just delighted to be here and have this conversation with you. We have Persolais, who is an award-winning perfume critic and writer. Not at all. The pleasure is all mine. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. I always, always love any opportunity I can get to talk about the power of perfume. So I want to begin this conversation by asking you, the past year has had a huge impact on our sense of smell and how we perceive fragrances. It's not just for people who've lost and regained their sense of smell due to COVID, but also just from being deprived of regular olfactory experiences we would have had on an otherwise regular day. Do you think this has evolved our relationship with fragrances? What do you think about it? Um, looking at things from a global perspective, the relationship with perfume from country to country varies anyway. Suddenly, because of the pandemic, and as you say, not just because of people getting unwell, but just because of being locked down, suddenly smell became something that people were actually more conscious of. I think what the situation has done is brought smell further forward in people's minds and on people's daily agenda, if I can put it that way. As a people, we're finally attuned to uh, the smell of spices, the smell of nature in our gardens. So while the hustle and bustle of the city smells has uh, taken a back seat, I believe that we have entered into a stronger relationship with those sense of smells that are more purposeful and meaningful to us as people. Fragrances are known to be an extension of our personality. We've always picked one based on the side of our personality we want to reflect to the outside world. We pick one based on how we want people to perceive us. But more recently, there's been a move to reflect more inward. We're thinking about how we want a fragrance to make us feel. So we're also seeing this in the fragrance world as a move towards more nostalgic scents that trigger a certain emotion. So do you think that this change is global? Are we really moving towards fragrances that make us feel something versus how they make someone else feel? I had a friend who actually lost his sense of smell because of COVID. So what I did for him was bottle little experiences that he valued. So for example, um, the smell of cut grass, the smell of uh, freshly shampooed, uh, I don't know, a baby who's just had a bath. And the exercise was that he had to smell these every day at certain intervals. So his it has his sense of smell has come back, but he's reverse engineered that entire process. So he's used his mind to recall emotions that have brought those scent experiences back into his life. Everything that you're asking could be summed up by this idea of why do we wear perfume in the first place anyway? You know, what is the point of wearing it? Because we are thinking more consciously about smells and perfume, we now have a wider range of reasons for wearing perfume. And I think that can only be a good thing because it basically means that people are buying more perfumes, wearing more perfumes, building up a perfume wardrobe. I think we're moving towards a nostalgic sense because we miss that human connection, you know, just the simple act of hugging someone when you meet them. So I'd really like to ask you, how would you define the scent of a hug? Once had a, a client come to me during his summer holidays as as a child, go from Bombay to Kerala in a train to meet, to spend his summer holidays with his grandmother. And uh, they would reach Kerala and get into this ambassador car. You're sweating, your skin is rubbing against the leather. You drive along this very, very lush green and they'd stop at his grandmother's porch. And the first thing that they would do is jump out of the car, rush to her and hug her. They would instantly smell uh, camphor on a starched, crisp, white and gold cotton sari. So, you know, when I'm telling you this, you instantly understand what that hug has come to mean 
to a little child so this is a process that i think a perfumer has to go through before you can table and bottle something like this which means you know the camphor comes the smell of starch comes the smell of textile comes the green comes and then you table all of these into a heart note a base note and a top note the point is that our training allows us to take you on that emotional journey so that you can harness that little uh, experience the scent of a hug is probably actually the scent of a lot of synthetic musks mainly because they are used so much in detergents and fabric softeners most people in the western world when you hug them what you are getting is the smell of synthetic musks that's why synthetic musks are now also used in perfume compositions where the perfumer wants to project a sense of comfort because if you think about it when somebody sprays a perfume very quickly the top notes will evaporate and vanish then after a couple of hours the mid notes will vanish so by the time you're getting to hug that person their perfume has gone down to the base notes over the years there have been some iconic notes and fragrances that define the feeling of being in love or just feel loved are there any fragrances for you that define love perfume a scientist point of view you understand that and this is commonly known uh, the body has pheromones which stimulate the sense of smell and uh, there's something called uh, the human leukocyte antigen and an antigen basically it's it's a foreign particle that forces a reaction from somebody else which is why you know when when you say uh, opposites attract it's usually something that um, you're repulsed by a smell that is actually very similar to your own and you're attracted to something that is a little bit more different or intriguing or mysterious or you know which allows you a pathway to to uh, discover something new and that is really where the point of attraction happens from a fragrance uh perspective to me if i want to uh, express a gesture of love with a perfume gift that i'm giving to somebody then i would look for a rose and i should stress as well that i try not to make gender distinctions in perfume one of my most 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 beloved rose compositions is a perfume that is actually proving harder to get at the moment it's from the old french brand uh, garlin and it's a perfume that they released in the late 70s called nahema uh it was a huge 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 commercial flop when it was released but people now think that it was way ahead of its time we're always looking for something that brings us a sense of joy and happiness What's the one fragrance or note for you that brings that sense of happiness? Well, as soon as you said that word, my mind was filled with images of citrus fruit. Um I think because they are so effervescent because they are so exuberant, you know, they literally fizz with energy and life. Those are the things that I associate with joyfulness. One of the most striking examples of the use of a citrus note in a perfume for me is from the brand again Frederick Mal. They do a cologne which they simply call Cologne Bigarad, and every single time I smell it, it doesn't matter how many times I smell it, I've been smelling the perfume for years, you would think by now it would not be possible for that perfume to take me by surprise, but every time it does because each time I smell it suddenly it feels like right in front of me there is this huge bowl of the freshest citrus fruit you can imagine of every variety and it looks as though the oils are just ready to burst and you just want to sink your teeth into this stuff and then of course all of the other images come rushing as well the the the, the beautiful summer's day with the blue sky and the brilliant sunshine if you want a quick lift if you want a quick spritz of happiness find the scent in your collection that's got the best citrus notes in india a history of the attar industry and uh, i think it's remarkable that you know you they really have been able to capture the smell of rain on wet earth or the smell of wet wet wet, wet earth which is a, a very very common attar fragrance and it brings joy in a way that you know is um, to one person when they wear it but also to the next person who smells you as they walk past you and then it leaves a lingering odor a little silage so that when you leave the room that memory of the rains is still there you know uh, so i think that that is it's it's very very beautiful and evocative uh, as a scent and it's it's transcended generations you know so
for me that brings me joy so i'm very curious to know what are some of the fragrances and notes that you've been attracted to instinctively well the big hit of the year so far and i don't think it's been a hit just for me i think it's been a hit for a lot of people in the sort of fragrance criticism world has been uh, the recent exclusive release from chanel it's called the lion or to give it its proper french name le lion fragrance composition seems to be going one of two ways so what we're seeing is that some brands are releasing rather subtle rather quiet soothing comforting gentle delicate scents but the other trend is the total opposite the other trend stems i think from this idea of i've been locked down for ages i haven't had any contact with people then when the doors open i'm going to be out there and i'm going to be announcing my presence and people are going to know that i've walked into the room and i want to chew up life in a way that i have not been able to do for ages perfume geeks like me really love it because it seems to also pay homage to lots of scents from the past so if anybody is aware of the classic uh, chalamar from garlin it pays homage to chalamar it also seems to pay homage to two key scents from chanel's past their cuir de russie which is their russian leather and also coromandel which has a beautiful patchouli note so chanel's le lion i've been reaching for a lot so i'm just beginning my journey uh, in learning about attar and how how it's structured from a in a chemistry laboratory but uh, you know there are little facets of it that i discovered which were extraordinary perfume practitioner like a doctor who would create the scent right there and then based on its reaction with your skin and as we know different fragrances react differently to um, the texture of people's skin the the molecules coming off it even sometimes the way you sweat you know your environment and therefore each individual comes away with his uh sort of signature scent uh rather than having something that is compartmentalized that you can just buy off a shelf and i think given the context of our conversation this is it's a very very interesting study because it really takes you through then who you are and only when you know who you are can you actually talk to the world about that person you've discovered thank you so much for giving us your time this has been a very insightful conversation thank you honestly the pleasure is all mine it's such a tremendous honor and a thrill to be able to talk about perfume thank you so much for having me it really has been such an inclusive and enriching experience to learn from all of you this way today um thank you for making it so meaningful